Like the subject of today's investigation, the Templin Institute will not suffer the witch to live, and we're doing something about it. Tonight, at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll be starting a new multiplayer cooperative campaign of Warhammer 2 Total War. I'll be sending out my trusty witch hunters to kill heretics as the Empire of Man, and the folks over at the Blunderdome will be playing as the Kingdom of Bretonia, and I'm sure supporting me with legions of knights. You can watch all the action over on our Twitch channel, and you'll find the link in the description below. Within the Empire of Man, corruption takes many forms. While the melodramatic plays of Detlef Seok delight the nobles of Imperial cities with tales of hideous mutants and mustache-twirling villains, the truth is far more insidious and far more terrible. The followers of the ruinous powers can cloak their evil behind smiling faces and noble deeds, preaching in soothing tones the values of brotherhood and peace and they can just as easily assume forms that defy comprehension, festering in malignant power within the darkest depths of human civilization. Chaos promises redemption, freedom, power, and the fulfillment of every desire. It crosses all social barriers, penetrates into the hearts and minds of the most devout, and devours all it touches. So abhorrent is chaos to the soul of humanity that even when presented with incontrovertible evidence that this insidious force exists, a man will strive to deny it, clinging to the hope of some other explanation, some other justification. It is this wanton disbelief that allows the greatest cults to form and thrive. To fight the forces of chaos, one must embrace the power of certainty. To know without a shred of doubt that whatever actions they take, no matter how vile and outwardly evil they might appear, are done in the service of a higher good. There are few men and women who can put a town corrupted by chaos to the torch and sword, few who can ignore the cries of burning men, women, and children. But those that do have earned the title of Witch Hunter. Where the noble orders of the Empire have been built on solid foundations of tradition and ceremony, and now claim sole dominion over the honorific of night, no overarching organization controls the actions of the Witch Hunters, or who might earn that title. They roam the lands as both the bane of civilization and its most stalwart protectors. Anything unnatural, they oppose. Witches and warlocks, unsanctioned wizards, mutants, Cultists, Chaos Spawn, Vampires, and the Undead, all that does not conform to the good and righteous, is cast down and purged. They are often grim-faced individuals, working alone or in small groups. They have earned a reputation as coldly dispassionate warriors, well-armed and sturdy. In the absence of any standardized uniform, most prefer hooded cloaks or wide-brimmed hats and adorn themselves with every manner of protective talisman. Their profession forces them to be ruthless killers, and every manner of rumor or aspersion follows in their wake. Among the citizens of the Empire, they are equally feared, loved, and hated. Tales are told of fathers forced to watch as their children are burned on the pyre or gigantic beastmen slain in single combat, of towns burned, and towns saved. Of those witch hunters who act with any kind of official authority, they do so as state-issued Templars within the Order of Sigmar. This is one of the many militant arms of the Cult of Sigmar, but centuries of tensions between the Church and the rule of the Emperors means that sanctioned witch hunters now operate under the supervision of both. This arrangement is meant to prevent either organization from gaining too much power, but this balance frequently shifts to one or the other. Decentralized by design, witch hunters are divided into northern, southern, and eastern districts, each covering a large swath of the Empire's territory and each commanded by a witch hunter general. Within each semi-autonomous district are various chapter houses, each commanded by a witch hunter captain. These provide areas of refuge and resupply to the various Witch Hunter Templars that serve as the organization's field agents. 
autonomous and unrestrained by nature, which hunter Templars nevertheless rely on established chapter houses to rest, share information, house prisoners, and cooperate with their brothers and sisters in need of assistance. Supporting the witch hunters themselves are a variety of mercenaries, priests, licensed wizards, and zealots. These provide everything from additional military support to holy protection to maintaining war gear or records. Often these individuals will join the retinue of a witch hunter, traveling with them in pursuit of their targets. While the Templars of Sigmar are the most famous of witch hunters, many other groups exist. Each state within the Empire is known to employ agents beyond the control of the Church, yet empowered with the same level of authority. Both groups are hardened veterans, driven by faith and committed to the eradication of chaos. Mercenaries, too, might sometimes adopt the moniker of Witch Hunter, selling their talents to serve a community in need. Increasingly, however, a new type of Witch Hunters has emerged across the Empire. They are driven not by Imperial law, faith, or even the desire for gold, but rather reasons entirely their own, be it guilt, hate, revenge, or something else. While their determination and zeal matches those Templars officially sanctioned, they lack their infrastructure and support. Many of these renegade witch hunters meet grim ends, but a few have earned the respect of their official peers through their impossible successes. By whatever title they claim, or what drives their actions, those who have dedicated their lives to the destruction of chaos have always existed across the history of the Empire. The Templars of the Cult of Sigmar trace their heritage to Wolfgart Krieger, said to have battled beside Sigmar himself in the wars against Nagash. But the modern order only truly emerged centuries later by the order of the Grand Theogonist Siebold II. Beset by demonic cults and weakness upon the Imperial throne, he formed the Order of the Silver Hammer, a group of warrior priests and investigators. For decades, their power grew, but as their ranks expanded, the caliber of their recruits weakened. Too often, the witch hunters were those of low character, blinded by zealotry and easy prey to the very powers they sought to destroy. They clashed with rival groups, those both heretical and loyal, culminating in a tragic war against the Sisters of Sigmar within the doomed city of Mordheim. In the aftermath of the Great War Against Chaos and the rule of Magnus the Pious, the Witch Hunters were restructured and partly secularized. The Order of the Silver Hammer was legitimized and placed above their rivals, but also forced to work within the boundaries of Imperial law. This agreement has endured ever since. In the modern Empire, Witch Hunters are no longer free to burn and kill at will, as their forefathers might once have done. Yet, their power remains considerable. Any Imperial citizen, from the lowliest commoner to the highest noble, can be arrested at their command, interrogated, and tortured until the truth of their crimes has been discovered. In the greatest cities and deepest forests of the Empire, every aspect of the ruinous powers work in the shadows to destroy the power of mankind. Yet, the shadows are not the dominion of evil alone. From darkness, can spring light. This is a fact that even those most wholly consumed by chaos must remember, no matter how secluded their gatherings or how hidden their plots. All those who have betrayed humanity in the service of the Dark Gods are not above the fear that one day a stranger will emerge from the darkness, bringing with them faith, steel, and fire. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 